my story will be um, a story uh, starting from the uh, position of civil society, let's say, concrete actor. Uh, a citizen's initiative uh, combined with nowadays an NGO structure in uh, Brussels region. Um, and I think it's uh, connecting to, to the topic uh, because it's a concrete experiment in how to deal with the living together through diversity in society. It's about informal education processes on how to learn from each other. We just talked about how important education uh, schemes are and what we try to do in our project is uh, to set up um, more informal uh, education uh, processes. And uh, all of that, of course, connected to the uh, uh, issues that uh, link us today. It's to struggle against prejudice, racism, exclusion, um, social exclusion, cultural exclusion, uh, and whatever kind of exclusion. So it's um, an example, of course, not the single example, but one of the thousands of examples that exists, uh, I think, all over the world, looking for new practices on how to connect what is not connected, uh, to let meet people that haven't uh, necessarily shared a past in the society where they live in. In our case, it's Brussels. Uh, so it will be a story that is referring, of course, to the concrete situation of Brussels. But I think everybody uh, can switch the different concepts and the different principles that we uh, defend to their own uh, situation. So what we do is, um, Zinneke is, yeah, it's mentioned Zeneke in, in the program, but it's, it's Zinneke, um, is a, what we call a city project, uh, where we do in-depth work in the different neighborhoods of Brussels. We work through long processes of one and a half year uh, to set up uh, initiatives and, and uh, build up the uh, projects with the inhabitants, but also with an artistic dimension, so also with professional uh, artists, um, and all uh, different partners in the different uh, neighborhoods. That means associations, schools, uh, uh, psychiatric centers, uh, uh, youth centers, cultural centers, uh, or informal uh, groups uh, and, and networks. So it's a very broad um, process of linking what is not linked enough to our opinion in uh, the city. Just to give you an idea, we uh, started in 2000, so it's a project that lasts now for 14 years. We have, since we have a BNL working. We have eight uh, editions of work. With each time, um, thousands of people that are mobilized through that process with thousands and thousands of hours of workshops, educational processes um, as well. The, well, the most well-known uh, output of what we uh, set up in, in, uh, in, in our project is this Zinnica Parade, which is mentioned in, in, in the program. Uh, but for us, it's just a cherry on the cake of an in-depth work that is very much under the radar um, and real work, uh, the important work that uh, we consider that we do. But that is shown in one uh, big parade after uh, a process that is built up in the different neighborhoods of Brussels. So concretely, uh, we're situated in, in, uh, in Belgium, which in the middle, this uh, Brussels region, which as you know, uh, is not only the capital of Belgium, uh, but also the capital of Europe with everything that is connected to it. So the places of the different uh, European institutions and thus also the different lobby groups. So it's a place where we are uh, used to have a big and important mobilization on all possible topics uh, that are, are uh, questioning society and, the, and, and, and what is going on in, in, in the world. So what we do with uh, Zinnike is uh, uh, we take that Brussels reality as, as the starting point. Just a brief uh, introduction on, 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 on Brussels. Brussels 
as a region is a quite complex uh, uh, city in the sense that uh, one might know that Belgium has a quite complicated uh, political structure, institutional structure, and that doesn't always help us in Brussels to deal with the social uh, issues that we should deal with. So we have uh, two communities, language communities, uh, uh, at the one hand, but 19 municipalities, and they all have res responsibilities and competences on a diff different level, but not always connected to each other. So that gives us a quite uh, sometimes uh, impossible political situation to really uh, go forward um, uh, on a coherent way to certain uh, uh, issues. At the other hand, it's uh, Brussels region is always figuring in uh, the top uh, uh, richest uh, regions of, um, of Europe. But if we go look to the income situation uh, of people, then we have an all uh, a completely different story uh, because we have about 28%, depending on the figures, if we use the uh, European uh, um, uh, counter model, then we have about 30% of the population living under the poverty rate. That's enormous. This figure uh, shows you the uh, blue, uh, dark blue spots are the concentrations of uh, the lower uh, income uh, groups. And we see, in fact, historically, the print of the 19th century development of the city uh, with the uh, installation uh, of uh, the old industries and who says industry says migration. In the first time, it was internal migration, uh, the peasants uh, coming from different parts of the country. And then we, we know uh, very well in our northern European countries how we, after the First World, world War, started to organize uh, migration to hand, uh, get in uh, labor uh, forces. And that goes on until today, of course, with the mundialized, uh, the globalized uh, migration uh, that uh, is still um, visible in, in the, the blueprint, let's say, uh, of, of, of the city. Uh, of the Brussels region. So that gives us a city with an enormous um, diversity, which we consider to be an enormous potential. Uh, certainly, it's not easy. We have to deal with it. We have to search for new practices to connect uh, all this uh, diversity. Um, but for us, it's really um, a toolkit where uh, we think we should work uh, with uh, on a daily basis. Um, well, I let you read the, the figures. What is important as well is, uh, is, is maybe to highlight the, the fact that it's not actually only a question of, of social and cultural diversity, um, uh, but also in terms of ages. We have about one third of the population uh, younger than 25 years that we have, so that means that we have an enormous potential uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the Brussels uh, region, which is uh, the case, uh, well, might be uh, important to mention as well, for a lot of uh, big cities. Eh? So what we try to do is to set up processes where we try to break down uh, all these uh, limits and go against uh, um, well, the, the reality, the, the, the concrete practice that separates us. That means uh, our national bound, nationalistic references, uh, the languages that we speak, uh, the age that we have, where we live, in what part uh, of, of the city, what neighborhood we live in, uh, and so on. So what we try to set up in the beginning of a process is an in-depth work in all the neighborhoods where we go and look for different partners, as I mentioned, from a very diverse uh, uh, origin, where we try to connect um, the, those organizations, those actors, those uh, 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 persons. Uh, sometimes it's, it's a lot of patient work, as you can imagine. Uh, we are like some kind of a marriage bureau where we take time to meet people, see who they are, what they would like to do, and then uh, try to see uh, if uh, people might uh, be interested to work and collaborate together, especially through an artistic and a cultural uh, project that will set up. That will set up uh, through a process that we 
uh, considered to be very important uh, to be a participative process. Because unlike a lot of other projects that exist, what we try to set up is a process where all people are co-producer from the very start of what is going to be done, of the theme that is going to be uh, central in, uh, in, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the project, the questions that they want to raise, the, uh, the topics that they want to share uh, with each other. And then from there on, uh, step by step, go further and further and reflect uh, on, on, um, on what kind of project they could set up. But behind that process, what is important to us is what is written there. It's that we learn people on concrete, uh, in concrete situations, in a concrete experiment, in an everyday life experience, what it means to listen to somebody take time to hear what that person has to tell, even if it's difficult because you don't share the same language or that person is not daring to speak easily uh, uh, with people that he or she doesn't know uh, or with persons who cannot speak because they are, have a, 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 a handicap and so on. So that means being confronted very concretely on what it means to be in a minority position. And I think it's very important that everybody has these kind of experiences in life, what it means to be in a minority position. And so meaning trying to seek in that context why, at, at, at what moment you use uh, excluding, excluding practices. Huh? So it's not the professional that should lead the meeting or the workshop. It's not necessarily the one that speaks a dominant language that has to take the word. It's not necessarily the person that is there with a certain uh, uh, evident competence. It, in our processes, makes it possible to have the refugee, the undocumented, uh, le sans papier, the illegal, yes. Some might name it, which is a word that is horroring us, of course, uh, becomes the person that has the right competence in the group. Because he or she in, in her or his country has been an important and uh, a very uh, uh, competent and skillful dancer. And he and she or she then becomes the workshop leader for about 100 people uh, through one and a half year of, of work. And so there we try to work step by step, always in reversing uh, the dominance, uh, the, the positions uh, um, that we in most other practices reproduce. So the force of the artistic project is that it's a language that um, permits very easily uh, to speak and connect with each other. And I think we underestimate the uh, importance of this aspect uh, of, of life. And it's not disconnected at all from education, economics, work, housing questions at all. It is about a concrete practice on sharing symbolic competences, knowledges, skills, uh, and, and so on. And from there on, discover uh, the, the forces in each other and then from there on take people on a path together because once all of, all of a sudden that person is not just the refugee that I sometimes see in my street because he goes to this social center that is uh, nearby but all of a sudden it's Sambaso and Sambaso is, an, is, is somebody with incredible competences okay he has to learn the language but uh, he uh, seems to be a magnificent uh, uh, educator, and so he can be somebody who, uh, at a certain stage, after one year, can come and work in my school to do uh, this or this, uh, this uh, concrete job that he is very skilled in, and so on and so on. So it's also a way to, um, to explore the diversity of the competences through another way then through the sole and, and dominant entrance uh, that we very often reproduce when we have social programs, uh, programs to help uh, uh, 
uh, unemployed uh, persons uh, and undocumented refugees uh, and so on. Very often we take them from what is lacking in their lives and we take them from their weak points. So what we try to do is there again to switch the, the, the positions and to take the starting point uh, of what they um, have as a force. With the parade at the end, so long process, thinking of pro projects, starting to make them concrete through hundreds and hundreds of hours of workshops where people concretely meet. At the end, this is one. This is the biggest project. We have other projects, but this is the biggest one. At the end, we, we always work um, in the public space. And that is a, is a, is a very explicit uh, choice uh, as well, because we consider the public space as being one of the spaces where not only physically, but also symbolically, um, the confrontation with the difference is, uh, is evident, huh? present, but also really a battle. Huh? Because we consider more and more, oh, as mentioned here, the public spaces in a lot of our cities as being threatened. More and more they're getting, or you don't have really private spaces, um, uh, oh, public spaces, sorry, or we are more and more privatizing them by making them uh, uh, commercialized spaces or secure, uh, ba uh, spaces where you have the cameras and so that uh, uh, security uh, guarded and so on. And we really think that there is a, a, big, a big issue in uh, continue to fight for uh, the development in our uh, living spaces. If it's in city or in more rural areas, I think it's very important to continue to struggle for these public spaces that allow us to create these shared spaces and also there um, create the, um, uh, the, 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 yeah, the space for uh, the speech of those, uh, the words of those, the stories of those that we are not used to hear or see or meet uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So if I try to resume what we uh, try to defend is there's a lot of things that we can do. Uh, the, Austrian, the question was raised on what kind of projects uh, can, can be set up. And I think it's on every level of society. If it's in education, if it's in housing policy, if it's in economics, because what we do, uh, I didn't mention it, but what we do, we, do, we also have different um, uh, education, more formalized education and training pro pro processes that we set up through uh, uh, um, techniques, uh, technical uh, programs and training programs on certain techniques and, and um, uh, how do you say again in English, uh, hand handicrafts, so old, old uh, techniques that in our societies are getting, uh, uh, we are losing them. Huh? but they're getting very expensive to, to have them, uh, to work with metal uh, and, and concretely, uh, not only industry-based uh, technique uh, creation, but also very concrete, uh, uh, basic uh, technique uh, training. And that gives every year um, tens and tens of people the possibility to find a job. So it's also about very concretely connecting uh, people again with concrete practices, concrete uh, networks where they uh, can meet other people and from there on start and rebuild uh, their, their life there where it was difficult before. So it's about really trying to seek actively and proactively. I think that's really important as well uh, for the potential that we have around us. I was talking about the importance of creating shared spaces, and I think it's not that um, obvious. I think we are lacking spaces where we can share. Uh, we are obliged to meet other people that we not regularly meet. And these uh, uh, spaces are really very important. And we defend there not only the do-it-yourself practice huh, to learn to be quite an autonomous and emancipated in, in, in what you do, but also do it together. So we add to the DIY, the DIT logic. 
What we always defend as well is every time that groups and people are willing to, uh, to set up a project, we oblige them to collaborate with other people that they don't know, other ages, people in psychiatry, uh, asylum seekers, uh, people in uh, social difficult situations, but also the expats, uh, the European uh, institution-linked uh, workers in, uh, in, in, in the city. So connect the rich and, and, and the poor. And there again, the central idea is always to set up uh, uh, an initiative where it's possible to go against these prejudices, these uh, obvious images that we have of the other, hmm? uh, because that's easily constructed. Huh? Since mankind started to build walls, I think that we started to build walls in our heads as well, and I think it's an in-depth work for any, every individual <laughs> uh, in, in this uh, uh, earth to, to, to learn to deconstruct that. Hmm? We consider the uh, importance of uh, this collective creation and co-production a key uh, aspect as well, because uh, it was mentioned, shouldn't we invite uh, Romas to, to, uh, to, come, to come and talk? I should say yes, of course, but also include them in producing the program of what you're going to tell. Hmm? So really get, uh, let us stop the talk about, <laughs> but include even in the programming before we decided what we're going to do, the people we uh, want to uh, connect uh, with. And I think it's, it's always a matter of, um, if it's our project of another project, no matter what, it's always about, I think, looking how to can, you can create a, 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 the possibility to let people talk with each other, to create what well, I call here um, a, a, a shared, framework of reference. So that means that everybody has to give something of him or herself at the one hand, but at the other hand, what is connected and what will be the us, the project that we build together, is the result of what everybody has put it in it. And it's a hybrid uh, construction, huh? a really a project, uh, projecting into something that is different from, from me. And I think that is a very interesting uh, uh, process that we should continue to, um, to explore. Not being afraid of doing that in concrete uh, situations, um, and that might be a neighborhood, uh, a territory, but it might also be in, 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 in network, but start from concrete uh, situations. The artistic part, I'm not going to deal too much uh, with it. But um, always think on, on how uh, we reproduce dominant uh, positions and how in your project and, and how in what we do, we can deconstruct and uh, uh, break down these uh, dominant positions. And to what us um, is concerned, it's also about when I started in the beginning to say that it, Zinneke is a city project, it's also a battle for a, kind of, a certain kind uh, of city. And for instance, Brussels, but Brussels is not the only uh, city where this issue comes uh, up more and more, uh, where it's very important to position ourselves uh, as a competent and uh, um, uh, concurrential uh, uh, city, uh, because we have to put us on, on, on the map and, and it's like you know, and, uh, capitalism in, in, in uh, in, in the cities, we have to fight for our place to be the most attractive one in the cosmopolitan city and so on. And we think uh, we can never, never uh, lose uh, a site. At the same time, the question of what kind of city then do we invest in? And who do we do it for? And what do we do with the inhabitants? What place is there still for the uh, uh, inhabitants? And what kind of uh, inhabitants? Well, yes. And I'm stopping here then. So. Nevertheless, uh, one of the things that uh, I think is important as well is it's not an easy process. Working on the social aspects, I mean, even in a couple, getting two people living together on a daily basis is already very difficult. So dealing on a daily basis with other layers as on top of that is really not an easy issue. 
I think it would be a mistake, and I think it has been explored yesterday already in the first time. But on the other hand, it's also important not to be afraid of confrontation and of conflict. But we have to learn to debate and to confront each other in order to avoid violence and war. And that is something that we have to explore on a daily basis as well. I think in education, and also in informal, informal education uh, practices, this is one of the things that we uh, started to uh, forget to uh, invest in. Hmm? Voilà. I'm, um, I will leave it up to here. 